So today's topic is the confessing, confessing leader. Now that may seem like a very strange title to have. It sounds like a confessional leader, one that confesses is a leader who's already done wrong. And I would say that's actually quite the opposite. That it's quite possible that you're orienting yourself towards a leader who does not abide by James, which is to mix prayer with confession. And they may be very good at prayer, but they're also very good at hiding who they are because it is that is what confession is. And I'll share a story and then illustrate what I think some of the issues were. So there was a pastor at a church, and uh, after several years, I turned to my wife, and I was commenting about how he had been divorced. And she was surprised to find out that he was, in fact, divorced. And so this isn't a topic about divorce. It was a topic about how can someone go for years and not know something about that. And the converse is actually what's true. How can someone go for years for a very defining moment and not reference it at least once or twice throughout a number of years? So let's take a look at why this is important and why I believe it is a hallmark, an essential hallmark before you approve of someone as a leader. So the first one is one that is confessing is one who must have at some point repented. Now, it doesn't mean that um, one who is not confessing has never been repentant, but certainly one who has never been repentant is likely to never be confessing. So this is the first thing. Our ability to access God and come before Him relies upon a sorrowful, repent repentant heart. But the way the church has evolved is that there are many who don't even realize that that is a part of being born again, is being sorrowful for our sin. And so when you have a non-confessional leader, that could be a signal that they are unrepentant from the beginning. The second one is, um, as I've mentioned, teaching is super important. It is the criteria beyond just normal behavioral uh, standards that is important. And I think many people get stuck on teaching as being a professor or someone who knows Greek or deep theology. But teaching, a large part of it, is to look at the role of Jesus in their own life and to share that. And so if you aren't confessing, they aren't going to share your sin. You're not going to be able to share how, despite your sin, you have been saved, redeemed, and born again. So the non-confessing person isn't going to be an effective teacher either. It doesn't mean that all teaching must be confessional, but it also doesn't mean no teaching is confessional either. The third is um, it reveals something about the guardedness and perhaps the lack of the spirit in someone who's completely non-transparent, non-confessional. When we truly believe that we are made right and that anything that's in the dark will come forward the light and in Christ we've been justified, then no problem and no sin really has an issue being shared. Now, it doesn't mean from day one the deepest and most darkest secret needs to be shared in public, but if there's non-confession, then there probably is a lack of power. Related to lack of power, if we look at James, talks about the healing nature of prayer. I think most people will acknowledge, oh yeah, prayer is important. But if we read it closely, nestled within that ability to heal, which is to save, someone must be able to confess. The one who's not confessing by definition is not as powerful, perhaps I would argue even powerless in their prayer. I think it's a mistake. Many places place such a great priority on someone's qualification based on the publicness or the vigor or the emotion behind their prayer. But we can see that Jesus himself warns against displays of prayer as a sole qualification. And in fact, those can be faked. This is not saying that all public prayer is faked. It's just that it is necessary but insufficient for someone's turn of heart. This is why James talks about praying believe in the context of a confession. So if you don't have that, then your leader's prayers 
could be potentially weak or, as I believe, ultimately powerless. They become show. And that, too, is not that effective. So if you're evaluating elders, leaders, a church, tune in for the confessional leader. For therein there is power and there is trusted on the nature of uh, um, repentance and the birth again. <laughs>